Born-Haber cycles can be used to figure out the lattice energy of a given ionic compound, or we can use them to figure out the heat of formation for some compound. We only really use these for ionic compounds, and they're all based on Hess's law, which hopefully you recall from thermochemistry. In a Born-Haber cycle, we're going to start at some initial state. And in that initial state, we're going to have two elements, in this case, lithium and fluorine, in their separate elemental forms. So our lithium is a solid piece of metal, and our fluorine is a gas floating around in a diatomic state. The Born-Haber cycle is a series of steps. And we're going to follow those same steps in pretty much every situation. The first step here is the enthalpy of vaporization. And in that process, our solid lithium becomes a gas. That's it. That's the only change that's happening. The second step is the ionization enthalpy. That is where our lithium gas becomes lithium cations, still in the gas phase. At that point, we're going to actually break our fluorine-fluorine bond. So the bond enthalpy of fluorine gas is the next step. Once that has happened, we're at this maximum enthalpy level. And so the next two steps that are required to get us to our final compound are both going to be exothermic. So all three of the previous processes are endothermic. We're putting energy in to break bonds, <clears throat> whether those are lithium-lithium metallic bonds or lithium electron bonds or fluorine-fluorine bonds. So that maximum enthalpy is essentially your activation energy. Now, once we have individual atoms or ions in the gas phase, we're going to start giving off energy. The first of our exothermic steps involves the fluorine capturing an electron. That gives us lithium cations and fluoride anions both in the gas phase. When both of those gas phase ions are close to each other, they will sort of automatically condense into the lattice framework that is lithium fluoride. And so this last step here involves our lattice enthalpy. The lattice enthalpy is very large. You get a lot of energy out when you put a lattice together. And so it is the largest arrow. The difference between where we started our initial state and where we've ended up here at the end, our lithium fluoride, is the enthalpy of formation for lithium fluoride. In order to determine any of the enthalpies of a specific step, we're going to use Hess's law. Remember, Hess's law says that for any state function, which the formation of an ionic solid is, the total energy change, the total enthalpy change, is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes of each of the steps. And so in this figure, it's the same process. It's just a little smaller graphic. Um, it's the same steps, right? So the total enthalpy of formation, which is this negative 606 kilojoules per mole, is equal to the sum of all of the five individual steps. I've written Hess's law out here with addition between each of the enthalpies that we have, and that is the preferred way to do it, but you do have to be careful with the signs of the enthalpy changes in each individual step. So in this case, our enthalpy of vaporization is going to be positive. 
our enthalpy of ionization is going to be positive. Our breaking of that fluorine-fluorine bond is positive. But then the ionization of the fluorine is going to be negative and the lattice is going the lattice enthalpy is also going to be negative. I'm not going to work through the math because I trust that you can add. But if you um, set up an equation where you've got the negative 606 kilojoules per mole as your delta HF, you should be able to add together these the three um, the three endothermic processes and then subtract the two exothermic processes, you should end up with negative 606. And so I would encourage you to verify that before you leave this video.